Hey everybody, welcome to the Power Hour of Love. I'm Charbo and this is... El Bandito. Hey, El Bandito. Oh, like we got du- double the Bandito tonight. Oh man, we are <laughs> rocking, man, but that is so awesome, man, because we had nothing but a rocking weekend. Why don't you tell them a little bit about it, El Bandito? Absolutely, guys, man. We have got a great show for you guys tonight because we're going to tell you about this exciting weekend that we had up in Palm Bay at the compound filming on the set of Bocas, which is an indie film based on a comic book uh, right here in Florida, man. So super cool action there. A little bit later after that, we're going to be talking about the hottest trailer, the one that just broke records for the most views in 24 hours. We're talking about the Venom trailer coming out this October, man. We're going to tell you what we thought about that fill you in on a little bit of insight about venom should be super fun and then finally in the second half of the show man we are doing our summer movie breakdown we did this last year where we talked about all the hottest movies coming out this summer what we thought of them what was our most anticipated flicks and we want to know what your most anticipated flicks are going to be uh we've also got some podunk news sprinkled in there a bit just like my salt bay deadpool down here sprinkling it in so that'll be super fun but uh First and foremost, why don't we just jump right into talking about the awesome weekend that we had? Oh, let's do it, man. I am so stoked. All right. We had a great time uh, filming on the set of Bocas up in, at the compound in Palm Bay, man. Oh, yeah, man. If you guys have never been by the compound, woof, if you do decide to go, make sure you bring <laughs> yourself a GPS, man, because it is definitely out there in the middle of nowhere. Why don't you tell them a little about the compound real quick? I, I don't know anything about the compound. They well, said this is where it was, and I went out there, and it looks like a destitute area of nothing, and I was super glad I brought bug spray. That's what I know about the <laughs> compound. Why don't you tell them what you know about the compound? Well, I know that, you know, back in the day, I mean, even like 20, 25 years ago, there was this big development that was going to get built out there, you know, uh, uh, pretty much west of I-95 in in Melbourne. And like, yeah, I don't know if like funding fell through or what happened, but pretty much, you know, building stopped, but they had all the roads out there, but no road signs. So, yeah, man, there's like over like, I think they said, what was it, like uh, like, uh, like miles and miles of, of road out there that just uh, leads nowhere. <laughs> like, so. You go nowhere. <laughs> so, yeah, in time, you know, you know, cracks have caught up through the streets. Yeah. You know, some of the trees have fallen over. So, man, I would say it is the perfect location for any zombie or post-apocalyptic type film. Absolutely, guys. And that is what I know a little bit about tonight is Bocas, man. We're talking about the Vigilante Fallen Angel filming some awesome scenes out here with massive zombie hordes taking people out. Now, spearheading the production is Jake Estrada, who we met at the Daytona Beach Comic Con. We got an interview with him up on our Facebook Live page, man. You guys got to check that out because him and David Grace, they also host the Space Coast Comic Con up there, a cosplay con. They got some insanity rooms. They got all sorts of cool stuff, man. So we'd love to rep them. And they invited us to come out and be some extras on set. And play oh, yeah. some zombies uh, uh, attacking, uh, you know, the, the the cast members there. So super fun. Oh, you know it, man. And like you know, like you said, when we had our interview with them, and these guys were just talking about it. I'm like, man, you know, we got to go and check this out, El Bandito. He said, <laughs> "Let's do it." All right. Well, let's take a look at some pictures from the set here. Let's see what we got. In, in no particular order. Here's uh, here's uh, you know, Senor Bull and myself gnawing on some yummy human parts there. Oh yeah, absolutely. So like you said, we took these roles as zombies, you know, which I thought we you know, did, I mean, this was just so cool, man, because you know, I know we were both like kind of sitting around saying, you know, what are we gonna wear, you know? Oh, let's <laughs> just bring some tore up clothes. And they had said that you know, if you arrived, you know, if you dressed the part, that they would be providing makeup, which I thought that was so cool. Absolutely, this was a, a class act production all the way i mean it was fully catered you know you guys saw the logo for jersey mike subs they oh, yeah. they brought out a but i mean everybody had jersey mike subs you could have two if you wanted man they had this gourmet popcorn out there that they gave everybody and it was all like toffee and caramel and i got a nutella one that was pretty dope <laughs> but uh they also had man just all the water you could drink i mean on a hot day like that that was fantastic so 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 just accommodating for everyone that came out there to be an extra but on top of that like senior bull said they were they had like four makeup artists out there doing makeup 
but they had two primaries and then some assistant people that were helping. Oh, they had so donuts cool. out there for everybody, which I had a churro donut, which was the jam. <laughs> I, I actually dug in on some red velvet donut, which yeah. was just so great and so good. Like you said, that's what was just so good. Man, it was a warm day out, man, but like you said, they had plenty of water, plenty of food to keep your energy nice and up, man, and just, just a great you know crew you know i yeah. mean all all the extras that came out everyone was so nice and mm-hmm. just so like ready to get out there and be a zombie which we <laughs> loved and they had a great film crew out there some great production they had this giant five ton truck and all so really cool stuff let's see what other photos we got i know we got a close up there <laughs> and you're like scab wound on your head oh, which is vicious man. that's man. my like, boil yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some wicked road rash man <laughs> now tell us a little bit about that oh yeah so you know um i, I sat down in the chair as uh, el bandito was getting uh done up and they had just said well you know what would you like and i said well you know I got the spectacles that, you know, kind of like, you know, have to stay on me. But I'm like, you know, this giant forehead up here, feel free to go to town on that. <laughs> so um, the uh, the makeup artist's uh, assistant was like, hey, you haven't used any of your cornflakes yet. And I was like, cornflakes? I was like, man, that sounds kind of wicked. So, yeah, this, uh, you know, hopefully I'm not giving away any trade secrets here or anything like <laughs> I that. I think you're safe. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this little piece right here is like a a, a, cor- a couple cornflakes like glued to my head and all makeup up, man. I think it looks awesome. Heck yeah, it looks super great, super realistic, very gross and gory when you see it up close, man. Absolutely. So that was super fun, man. And like I said, the makeup artists were just fantastic. We brought Mr. Fusion with us up there. <laughs> what what a, what a, what an what awesome cast member Mr. Yeah, Fusion was. He acts like a zombie half the time you see him, anyways. You know, but they gave him this great divot in his forehead like somebody pounded him with a hammer right in his head that looks fantastic and we were funny we told him we said hey just drench us in blood just squirt it all over we don't care <laughs> we're gonna junk these clothes and they were like really yeah man they went to town so absolutely it was super fun but i want to give a special shout out to Paige, who did my makeup there man Th- this was totally off the hook bro like i sat down in the chair and she said she said what do what, what are you thinking what do you want to do and I was like, I don't know, whatever, you know? And I said, oh, well, wait, I don't see very well out of my right eye. So if you want to cover it up or something or put some scars or something over there, I don't mind. And she was like, oh, great. She turns to the makeup artist next to her and goes, hey, you almost done with that bottle of water? <laughs> just cuts it up, man. And they embedded it in my face right there. So it looked fantastic, super cool, great job. Extra special work because I know, like, I banged into someone later and got it half knocked off, so they had to <laughs> fix it for me. So I appreciate all the hard work you guys did to help really make me look cool and make the movie look awesome. I was gonna say, man, I, I was I was trying to talk talk them into just keeping it all day today and like wearing it on the show, <laughs> but I know it does. Like you said, did kind of adhere some of your vision and stuff like that. But it's man, a- like you said, it looks so hot, man. Oh, we got Party Man Will in the comments. He says, "Oh, what'd you do? Go to an ICP concert?" <laughs> <laughs> it's probably what would happen to us. <laughs> Absolutely, man. But nah, so so much good times, man. And like I said, just awesome makeup. All right. Oh, here's a picture. We got a shot of the three of us out here. Threw some Insta filters on there to make us look extra zombified. That was fun. Hey, there you go. There you go. Mr. Fusion, the happiest zombie there is. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how eclectic the group was, too. But here we got a picture with Jake Estrada himself, man. So cool. Taking the time to pose with everyone who came out to be an extra or to be in the film and to take a, a picture with the slate and everything was so cool. And he was firmly implanting that bottle in my eye in this scene which I, I i didn't appreciate much because he was killing my zombie self but you can see senior bull was getting him back right there oh you know <laughs> it man and, and then you got mr fusion just being like yeah but <laughs> he was being rock and roll back there he's throwing oh, up the metal and you know he was man and yeah yeah jake's such a nice guy man like i said we had our interview with them last week yes. and he invited us out and we just had such a great job and i have to say man like you know I'm a pretty big guy, but, you know, standing next to Jake, I see why he's the hero of this tale, man, because, yeah, I was like, man, yeah, I'm, I'm attacking this guy yeah. right now, but pretty soon I'm pretty sure that knife's going to go right in my forehead right over there. So Yeah, I, I love when they told us, they said, all right, he's going to come piling through all the zombies here, and then you guys just try to stop him. And I'm like, how much are we supposed to try to stop him? Because I feel like if I try to stop this guy, he's going to run me right over, dude. <laughs> but so good. So many great scenes. I can't wait to see the finished product. Um, and, yeah, once again, yeah, thanks to Jake and the crew.
crew from uh, mm-hmm. Bocas for inviting us and let us come out and have fun with you guys. Absolutely. We we threw in a shot here of the whole zombie crew out there with us, or at least whoever they could wrangle into a picture right here. And uh, like I said, it was very eclectic. We had some people who uh, dressed up like they were at the beach, and we had some people dressed <laughs> up like doctors and gardeners and all sorts of different things. So it was really fun. We really represent a lot of different angles there, and it was great. And someone even took the time to go ahead and zombie up a photo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and it it looks super <laughs> awesome, so I can't wait to see the finished product. Uh, another special shout-out to our choreographer, uh, yes. Demetrius Mitchell, man. like It was super fun working with you. It was really cool. We had a great time like kind of learning some, some moves there. We don't want to spoil too much if you haven't seen it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we got, some, we, we got some fun action there, and he let us swarm and eat them, so it's always yes. great to share a meal. Yes, absolutely, you know. <laughs> nice eating you. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So much fun. But yeah, that was that was super great. We put a link up for Florida Today, who they had a correspondent out there, Tim Short, who took some great photos of the event and everything like that. And uh, and you can head over there and check that out to learn more about Bocas and about the film and and see some more cool pictures of us oh, get, yeah. getting shot up like in zombies. the action. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a lot of fun, man. Super stoked. Heck yeah! But all right, that'll wrap things up for the set of Bocas. But we got to talk about what's going on in the Venom trailer, man. Oh, you know it, man. You know, we know Venom trailer released, you know, what, like two or three months ago. And I know we quickly, like, jumped on it and said, hey, man. You going to have any Venom in your trail, in your movie here? (laughs) And um, what the... you do have Venom in your Venom <laughs> film, don't you? <laughs> and, and I got to say, man, this latest trailer, if you guys haven't seen it, they definitely do deliver at the end. But we're going to kind of talk about the pros and cons and what we think that, you know, where we think the film is going mm-hmm. and, you know, how, how we feel it's going to all turn out. Absolutely, guys. Now, obviously, this is being adapted from the 1993 Lethal Protector storyline. I say obviously because so many elements in the trailer are right hitting the nail on the head for what was going on in this book um so why don't you tell them a little bit about it yeah well that you know the one thing that's really wild about that storyline it was venom's first mini series you Mm -hmm. know where he kind of branched off into his own thing he was always traditionally a spider-man enemy but about five years after his creation they said you know what let's have him break off him and spider-man had kind of called a truce so you know they weren't going to fight each other no more but venom had to get the hell out of new york because he just you know (laughs) had that hatred for spider-man so venom decided to go to california you know like the classic led zeppelin song you know (laughs) (laughs) so pretty much what he does is he relocates to san francisco and um while he's over there you know he's you know killing muggers and stuff like that you know he's not just like spider-man delivering them to police departments biting he doesn't web them up he's just like "Ah!" (laughs) He comes into conflict with a, a, a villainous group. Well, I guess more of like a military group called the Life Foundation. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, they're a corporation that they actually, in the story, go and they capture Eddie Brock and they're able to remove some of the symbiote seeds that are in the suit, in turn, creating more symbiotes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is from the comic. Now, from the trailer, what we saw, it's definitely set in California. The yep. life present or the life foundation is present. Yeah, with Carlton Drake, right? As yes, the, the yeah. head of the uh, the life foundation here. Absolutely, and you know I- he is the villain from the comic as well. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that's kind of funny is like I'm not knocking Tom Hardy for his dialogue. We know in a lot of movies, like he either has very little to say or not. But one of the lines from the trailer that I thought was really kind of cheesy was he's like, "Your boss is an evil man." And it was just kind of like, I don't know, it just kind of like, it, it almost came off as like a Power Rangers episode. It's like, he's an evil man. But I mean, we, we <laughs> like a Power Rangers. So that's rough. Yeah, man. he's an evil man. But I don't know. We don't know the context right, of the whole right. conversation. He could have been talking yeah. to somebody kind of, you know, like yeah. a kid or something. Now, Brock is a reporter. You know, yeah. like he is in the comics. So, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I know when he moved to San Francisco, he's mostly just a vigilant. But, hey, yeah, we and, get it. And, and this is definitely more like a journalist rather than the photographer they made him in Spider-Man 3. Yes. Like, he's back to actually writing stories and things like that, you know, which was always kind of, again, that sort of antithesis to, you know, Peter Parker being a photographer and him being the actual writer, you know. So it was supposed to be different, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum kind of a thing. Um, I, I know Carlton Drake in the comic is actually an older man, too. Yes. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, it looks like they're probably going to suit him up to be kind of a bad guy towards the end, you know? Absolutely. And, and you know, one of the things from the Lethal Protector storyline, like we said, 
five other symbiotes were created. Yeah. These were created after Carnage. Mm -hmm. So he had already kind of like, you know, showed up in Spider-Man and uh, Venom had already defeated Carnage together. But these guys showed up. And probably, I have to say, probably the most notable symbiote in this group is Scream up there with her fiery uh, yellow and red yeah, hair. Yeah. You know, she's actually in the Spider-Man ride. Uh, yeah, yeah. Universal. <laughs> I was just thinking that. that I was like, yeah, dude, she was, she was wicked. And I, I've, I've always wondered that. Like, you know, why didn't they just put Venom or Carnage in there? Because they but, needed a girl. You, know? <laughs> you got it. That's As I was thinking that thought, I'm like, yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, they were yeah. like, you know, yeah. You know, but, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I remember in fifth grade, I thought this was awesome. Heck yeah. I was like, oh, dude, look at these like badass yeah. symbiote. Plus Spider-Man's there. Mm -hmm. Just so you guys know, we might be jumping a little ahead. That's not going to happen in this movie. Yeah. Where's, <laughs> well, well Spider-Man's not going to happen in this movie for sure. I'm like, what's going on? How do you make a Venom movie with no Spider-Man? Crazy. That definitely is probably one of our biggest beefs and how they're going to wrap this around. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he has the traditional white spider symbol... Why? You know, why? <laughs> why? Yeah. There's really... Yeah. <laughs> they show shots of him doing kind of web-slinging sort of-esque action. So I'm like, well, okay, where did that come from? Uh, you know, and now it looks more like he's like a tentacle monster or something. Yeah, so yeah. it's a little weird. But and he did always have that that tendril kind of stuff from the company. Yeah. You're right. He he had unlimited webs that he would shoot mm -hmm. from his uh, his fist here. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and you know the spider sense. I mean, he it mm -hmm. learned that from Peter Parker. So I mean, and he could also mask it. Remember where yeah. where where Spider Man couldn't sense Venom. So there's just a lot of stuff going on that he's not going to have accessibility to being that the suit's never going to come in contact with peter parker yeah yeah so it's it's kind of weird but you know all in all you know there's a lot here that reminds you of venom what do you think of his look as far as venom goes i'll be honest on first on first watch of the trailer mm -hmm. i love that the the symbiote came over his head with the teeth sure because i know that was a classic thing from the comics yeah i mean i you know i did kind of like the Sam Raimi thing where it kind of like just bled into him like because mm -hmm. I know I've seen that too but I mean I know this is more traditional to have the mouth close around but when I first saw it I was like dude like look how many teeth he has yeah. and like how small his eyes are they're so s like skinny like they're not big like you know I just mm -hmm. I don't know I, I know I was being pretty harsh he didn't have the gum line yeah you know, there was yeah. stuff that I just thought about traditional venom that I thought it was kind of lacking. I mean, that big ass tongue like is in some renditions, but yeah, we have a lot to talk about his appearance. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, at, at my first watch, I'm like, he kind of looks like a cheap Halloween mask because he's so <laughs> weird and shiny and bumpy. Yeah, like it, it just looks weird. Like in comics, he always seemed very sleek, you know. Yes. So let's let's take a minute to take a look at, at Venom's kind of look, right? So here's him kind of in modern day comics. You see him, he's got the great big tongue and the million teeth, but his eyes are definitely big, like you were yes. saying. And he's definitely very sleek. He's not all weird and bumpy, you know? Sure. So this tongue thing is kind of a kind of a <laughs> thing, you see. I, I guess so. That I think that became more and more of a thing later. I mean, yeah. I remember he'd be like, I'll eat your brain, Spider-Man, and he had his <laughs> mouth open. And let's be honest, like, I mean, I know these probably aren't completely finished effects, but Where's the venom on venom? Yeah. Like, yeah. where's the drooly green shit that comes out of his <laughs> mouth in the comics? I mean, I know it's not right here, yeah, but yeah. that's a lot of those scenes you see that, like, spittle mm -hmm. crap coming. But this, like you said, I think this rendition is kind of what they're going for, more of just, like, a big-ass smiley face. But Yeah, well, what's funny is, right, okay, so this this image right here, this is the first appearance of Venom. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so this, this is, is okay. Yeah, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 299. It's the last page of the book where uh, he goes to Peter's house, oh. and Mary Jane opens the door, and he's like, hey, I'm home, you know? Oh, okay, and, okay. Uh, and it's very scary. No tongue, right? Yeah. Now, this was originally done by Todd McFarlane. He oh, drew this, yeah. right? Todd McFarlane, legendary, but he knows him from Spawn and stuff like that. But no crazy tongue, okay? So if we jump along and follow McFarlane's run, we're like, where does this crazy tongue thing come yeah, in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's Spider-Man 316, which was like the next big story arc after the, you know, 300, he was in the full book, you know, sure. two whatever. And then he goes away for a bit. Now 316, he shows back up pounding uh, Spider-Man into the dirt right here. <laughs> and uh, no tongue. Look at his tongue. It's like yeah. normal, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, not even snake-like or anything. Yeah, yeah, so it turns out McFarlane never, ever once drew Venom's tongue sticking out of his head. Wow. Right? Okay, okay. So in, in his entire run, we lead all the way up to Amazing Spider-Man number 332, where Eric Larson takes over the book, and he draws this panel. 
Wow. Right? Or this series of panels. These are actually like really long. I just kind of grabbed the bottom for, for our viewing purposes, but they like run the whole length of the page. It's really cool. And the spider's coming down, and here's Venom, and he eats the spider. So he's got the, the very salivating mouth, like he said, the yes. kind of venomous mouth, the, the, a little bit of a long tongue, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is definitely like Eric Larson's contribution to Venom, right? Yeah. This is the, the iconic, crazy tongue that he and has. That's, that's scary. I mean, that scene, yeah. if, if that scene is in the, well, why would he be eating a spider? Because there's know. no Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay. He's hungry. <laughs> but a similar type scene of the complete yeah. black blackout yeah. and then just the teeth appear and kind of stuff like that would be really nice. But so let's let's take a look at Larson's run, right? So okay. after this, he gets really into the drool phase like you were talking about. <laughs> the venom's right? venom. Yeah. So he gets he gets a little droolier and a, a little yeah. venomier. His his eyes are still big though. Look how big yeah. his eyes are, yep. right? Yep. Until it gets completely <laughs> just ridiculous <laughs> here in uh, Amazing 347, yeah. and this kind of spearheads on the iconic giant tongue that Venom will always have from then on. Okay, okay. Um, look, look at that mouth. Holy crap. Yeah, seriously. You want to talk about having too many teeth <laughs> and stuff? Like, bam, here you go. But yeah. again, the great big eyes kind of balance his head. Sure. You know, where the other one looks like he's all mouth, and he's got like a little, little bitty domicus, which is exactly. weird. Yeah, kind of weird, yeah. Yeah. Very so. cool, though. Good finding all that stuff on where the elongated tongue kind of came from. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, it took a bit of looking up, but I was very <laughs> curious to where, because I didn't remember that. I remember like Lethal Protector, his tongue's a little dashed out, but I didn't remember being so crazy as we saw it in the movie. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I read these comics way back in the day, you know? And I remember on the cover of Lethal Protector, we showed the I mean, his yeah. teeth, he had a lot of teeth, but they were very aligned and I don't in know. In his maybe, head? Yeah. You know? maybe, maybe he went and got like a Visalign. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You got some good braces going on or something. But uh, I wanted to take another quick minute to just talk about some of the things I saw in the trailer that are the things I think are a little unusual besides kind of his look, things that are more important to me rather than okay. the look. Um, I know first up, right, uh, the symbiote in comics was always something that needed a host and yes. it needed to bond with someone. And when it first wanted to bond with Peter Parker, uh, Parker was like, okay, cool. Then he saw how it was kind of changing him and how much of a lifelong bond it would be. And he rejected the symbiote and was able to fight it off. So it went looking for another host to willingly accept it. So it seems very odd to me that Tom Hardy seems like he doesn't want the symbiote at all. <laughs> yeah, like it's almost yeah. like forcing itself upon him. And I, 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 that's just such a huge departure from embracing this. The symbiote's molesting uh, Eddie Brock. <laughs> yeah, much. this is going to happen, bro. <laughs> Look at what you're wearing with your little open butt nightgown there. <laughs> but no, so we, we never see anything in the trailer. It's actually how he comes in contact with the symbiote. Obviously, here he's getting checked out because he feels sick or something, yes, right? Yes. So it's like, okay, well, so he, does he not know that he's bonding with a symbiote? Because that would be very different than the comic interpretation as well. Or the kind of you know, uh, canon. Well, I know in the comics, remember he's in the bell tower and Spider-Man yeah. strung him up and then it drips on him. And I think he's kind of like, ah, oh, like he doesn't know what's happening, but once it latches on to him and like, I think, you know, they have some sort of, they have that similar feeling, you know, uh, Brock hates, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sp uh yeah, Peter Parker, Peter Parker yeah. and the symbiote hates Spider-Man slash Peter Parker yeah. for abandoning it. So they're the perfect enemy for, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that kind of bonding thing seems like it might be handled a little wonky in here, especially as, as the trailer kind of progresses. And you see that Tom Hardy seems like he has no control or association with what the symbiote is doing. Yeah. Which seems totally wrong, that the host should be more in control of the symbiote than the symbiote himself. Yeah, you remember this in the comics where, like, Peter wouldn't do something, and sometimes the symbiote would try to attack. Like, but it was under extreme circumstances. Yes. Like, you, I see what you're saying here. Like, you know, these guys are coming into his apartment to like shoot him up or whatever. Give us back the property, yeah. you know. And then it's like, yeah, he just he's like, why, 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 why would we do that? You know, I was just <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, this would be like if Mister Fusion got the symbiote. Like, I mean, <laughs> why, why would we go and do that? So I, I don't know. It just seems a little weird to me that he seems like he's not really into being. Venom, you know, and I have to say that uh, the majority of those scenes, they show him jumping on the motorcycle and the symbiote's doing stuff and he's just freaked out and scared the whole time. And it doesn't seem like 
He's a badass who's out here to be a lethal protector. He seems like he's just the dude who's now burdened with being part of the symbiote thing. And I think this scene, once I, I caught this uh, still image of it, I was like, oh my gosh, dude, this is totally the read of what I'm talking about. Now check this out, guys. I'm going to pull it in just a little bit. Boom. Look Look at how like scared he looks <laughs> that this is happening to him. Yeah. This doesn't look like someone who's about to become an ass-kicking monster and wreck your day. No, dude. He looks like he's like, oh, scared. Oh, shit. It's like a moral conflict here or yeah. something. With the, yeah. So uh, it's, it's a little dicey. I'm not, I mean, we haven't seen the whole movie. We don't know where it's going, but. This... Rock better be lifting some weights in this movie. I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you. I mean, so far, you know, why would we do that? Doesn't feel like, doesn't seem like he's running to the gym every day. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't seem like the ass kicking machine that I always remember Venom being. Venom seemed like a, just a rage fueled ass kicking machine. Yeah. So I kind of hate this sort of wussier version of them, you know? <laughs> well, I know something we talked about that we have to talk about yeah. with you guys because this symbiote is talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? I grabbed this clip here because I think it was one that most featured the fact that the symbiote is straight up like another voice that this guy hears in his head. You know? <laughs> like... In the comics, and I, I, I and the cartoon, and, and Spider Man Three, and every other iteration of Venom <laughs> ever, the symbiote definitely had, I would say, an active voice where mm -hmm. it spoke through feelings, yes. or it would say, "Brock, Parker, mm -hmm. kill, hate," you know, very emotion-driven things. I do not ever recall it having a full-on conversation I, I don't with either of its hosts. Ever seeing a narration panel that said, this is the symbiote now talking. <laughs> I mean, dude, we get it. Deadpool has two different narrations running all the time. This had zero, okay? I know he would say, we are Venom. So yes. he acknowledged that the symbiote was a living being, mm -hmm. but it just didn't really seem to have... Uh, a humanoid intelligence. It was very yeah. animalistic. You know? Well, the, uh, the very definition, symbiote, it's something that needs a host who's thinking kind of for it. Yes. So he can contribute, but he's not a driving force. It, it has nothing to do with being a split personality. But that's what this movie seems like. It seems like Tom Hardy is an unwitting superhero where when the suit takes over, he's going to be a completely different person. Yeah. And, and like I said, it, I mean, I don't completely hate it, but it is different. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it, it seems like this is going to be less of like a Venom kicking ass movie or more of like an inner conflict movie, mm -hmm. making it a little more sci-fi, which, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but like when Marvel is doing so many things right, like this seems like a real, like to yeah. me at least a step backwards. What, but what is it that we preach on this show? Source material, source <laughs> material, source <laughs> material, you know? Yes. So. Oh, Eric G says down here, it's it's almost like they're trying to make him like Ghost Rider. Yeah. That, that's a great example how Ghost Rider, you know, uh, um, Blaze. Yeah. Never really wants to be Ghost Rider. It's kind of a burden he's stuck with. So, yeah, this is sort of the same thing. Good call, man. That's very similar. Absolutely. Well, one thing I definitely wanted to talk about were some of my fears from me. I know you guys probably just listened to us for the last 15 minutes, and you're <laughs> like, man, these guys hate Venom. Why do they hate Venom? No, no, we don't hate Venom. Listen, when I was in fifth grade, I loved Venom. I could pull up a buddy of mine, you know, onto the show and be like, "Hey, man, pull out some of those old pictures of us drawing Venom and Car." Mm -hmm. If this trailer came out when I was in the fifth grade, I would have been happy as as pie. Like, I actually showed this to like a various group of people: a ten-year-old, a five-year-old, another thirty-six-year-old. You know, the five-year-old was like, "That's kind of scary." The ten-year-old was like, "That's awesome." You know what the thirty-six-year-old said? She said. Isn't Venom supposed to be a bad guy? <laughs> so it just goes to show you, I don't know who they're going to try to please in this movie. Yeah. But yeah, well, who's it for? Here are a couple of my fears. Okay. For one, <laughs> it's being written by the guy, the same person who adapted Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay. I get I mean, I get it. Hey, let's take a moment to say that the guy that made Evil Dead made Spider-Man. This so is true. Yeah. Any, anybody can hit a home run, you know? This is true. This is true. You know, so I mean, hey, and it's probably a good paycheck. Yeah. I mean, hey, sometimes yeah. you got to, <laughs> you know. Sometimes you make the art picture, then you make the safe picture. <laughs> now, I know we've already mentioned it a few times. No Spider-Man. I mean, yeah. that to me, it, it just doesn't seem like it's going to blend. Yeah, you know? why, it doesn't make any sense to yeah. even have Venom with that. It would be like if we made a Bane movie with no Batman. <laughs> and considering this is Tom Hardy, 
Yeah. You know? No emblem. No yeah. web shooters. I mean, maybe I, they're still going to do that, but it, it just, like you said, won't make sense. I just, I really feel like, to me, when, you know, I was reading comics a lot, um, Bane and Venom were kind of in the same wheelhouse. That oh, They were that yeah. great big villain character who was supposed to just come in and beat the good guy, but he never really had a good story beyond his first <laughs> appearance. There was never anything for him to do after he got his ass kicked. So... I never personally really liked those characters. They had no motivation other than kind of a vengeance or a, a kill the good guy sort of thing, and I, di- I didn't really, I didn't really care for that. So the fact that they got like that kind of so wrong in the Dark Knight Rises with Bane, and then they just cast the same guy to just you know in a movie that again seems like it's not following the original stuff at all. I'm like. What are you doing? You guys are just—it's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> well, it's almost like you know they want to make this Terminator-ish character that's unbeatable, that's just a killing machine. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, guess what? Now you got to make like another killing machine for yeah. them to fight. Yeah. No, you know, yeah, they might throw in the five symbiotes. They might throw in Carnage. Who knows? Maybe this uh, uh, Carlton Drake's going to be Carnage, which mm-hmm. would be once again Sony just screwing the pooch on yeah. the so- on the source because Cassidy's like awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, it makes a great thing for this, you know badass venom to fight this serial killer that has the same powers as him Mm -hmm. but one more thing i just wanted to mention that really has me worried about this movie it's called venom it should be called eddie brock because i feel that that's what most of this movie is going to be about yeah i just it it just seems like the very end of the film he's finally gonna well i guess after you showed that picture i don't know how to say he he accepts it but he becomes we are venom and we're going to get maybe like 10 minutes of him running around in the costume and the rest is just going to be that's that's a very good point that that scene of it finally him suiting up is going to be the end of the freaking movie you're going to be like well why did i come here for an hour and a half well i mean i you know i know a lot of people they thrash like fantastic four yeah like, I think if they would have gotten dot, I'm not talking about the latest one. I'm talking about like the one from like 15 years ago yeah. or whatever. You know, if they were, I think if they would have gotten Dr. Doom out faster yeah. and like made him more of a villain, I think it would have been better. Yeah, I know he yeah. came back for the, yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean? It took yeah. so long. Yeah, like I definitely understand that in the first Spider Man movie that Sam Raimi did and in Iron Man, you know, the, the first one that came out in 2008, the, um, the best parts of the movie were the heroes learning how to use their powers. Those kind of montages of them discovering their abilities and things like that were super fun and super engaging. But certain movies, especially things with villains, that's not necessary. Or ensembles, like, we don't want to see that. We don't want to wait 55 minutes for the, the <laughs> conflict of the movie to start. You know, there should be some foreshadowing, some stuff coming up. So it kind of looks like, oh, okay, he's getting roughed up by this Carlton Dalton guy and that, or Carlton Drake, you know, and that he does um, kind of, you know, get him thrown out of the building and the bad guys are coming to his house when he's not really Venom yet. So there's some conflict a little bit there, but is it going to be enough to carry your attention? Does anyone care about Eddie Brock at the beginning of the film? Exactly. You know? I mean, it seems like the girl that he's talking to is probably his wife or probably his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And I know in the comics, she becomes the bride of Venom. And if yeah. they do that in a movie, like this com- this movie's completely out the window. Yeah, it's like they're just shoehorning uh, too much garbage in there, you know? <laughs> like, it's almost like you can have too many symbiotes. Like, yes. I'm seeing in some of the comments here, people are like, yes, carnage, carnage. And yeah, do I think that would be great to bring carnage to cinema? Yes, in like yeah. a sequel. Yeah. He does not need to be in the first movie. It, it, it's too... But it's, it's that kind of thing of imagine if the 2012 Avengers, Thanos was the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, who the hell is this? Why is he here? What, yeah. You know, Build sometimes up. you need lead in to these sort of things. And Sony's just so impatient to just cash grab, man, that they make these movies that make no sense. I mean, look at Amazing Spider-Man 2 when they're yeah. like, here's Electro and the new Green Goblin and then the old Green Goblin dying and then Gwen Stacy dying and all this stuff. And you're like, but you didn't set any of that up. You know, yeah, yeah, and you if, yeah the investment. Is yeah, there. if there's no investment, there's no reward for us. We don't care. But we'll have to see how it all turns out. You could guys be good. Yeah, you know? could <laughs> yeah. Be. we might we might be totally putting yeah, our foot we'll, in the mouth. Here. We'll be here in October, like just I'm just eating all my words because that was fantastic. But you guys, let us know what you think. If you think it's going to yeah. be an awesome movie, if you're just psyched to see Venom, but just remember, even though we're all psyched to see him come back, he's already been on screen twice. If this bombs. Uh, there might be a chance we don't see him again. You know, Spider-Man, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, he, he gets three times, you know. <laughs> Venom, maybe not so much. So, But, hey, man, I think this has been a great conversation. Thanks, everybody, for throwing down some convo here. But is, do you think it's about time for some podunk news? I think it's absolutely some time for some news, brother. Let's do it. Oh. 
Podunk News. Oh, man. You know, this is that time of the show, man, where we're going to tell you guys all the craziest stuff that's going on out there in this podunk world. Absolutely, guys. And we're starting off with, like, a very special, very favorite story of mine. We're talking about Avengers Infinity War. Don't worry. No spoilers. No spoilers. Stick around. We're not going to be talking about the movie itself other than to say I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Uh, But what we are going to be talking about is the fact that this thing came out like a powerhouse and absolutely just demolished the box office, man. And uh, I I wouldn't say Hulk smashed it, but the (laughs) Avengers Infinity War smashed it, right? With literally the biggest opening weekend in history of all time. All of the movies combined in the theater that were playing this weekend gave it the biggest opening weekend overall no slouch to the Avengers themselves who came in with the largest uh, opening weekend in history on its own of $640 million worldwide. Well, I got to say, man, like you said, no spoilers, but I think instead of Infinity War, this should have been called the greatest Royal Rumble. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, another event that happened this week was not as uh, <laughs> yeah. as exciting. Yeah. But yeah awesome movie guys i mean even if you're not like a you know if you haven't watched all the marvel films like this is such a great example of taking so many various characters and bringing them together and it making sense yeah this is a great example of building on sorts of different intellectual properties and different characters to the point where you can create an ensemble movie and have lots of stuff and interesting things going on and it's not just a bunch of nonsense thrown at you out of nowhere so really, really well done movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Two hundred and fifty seven million dollars wow. in the U.S. alone, making it the single highest uh, box office weekend for a movie in the U.S., beating out The Force Awakens by ten million dollars. Ten million. Yeah. Now, wow. in, the, in the foreign market, I'm super surprised at the fact that it's still the second biggest foreign opening. Really? What takes the first? The Fate of the Furious. Really? Yeah, it beat it out by like a, a Fa- good uh, ton of money. It's like crazy. the Fast and the Furious Part 8 or 9 or yes. whatever that was? Yeah, the rest of the world was like, dude, cars are the jam. So <laughs> I guess well, they like that. Hey, man, everybody has their things that they enjoy, you know, but hey, it's still number two. Yeah, number two is <laughs> not bad, man. Uh, so just real quick, a couple of records that they absolutely smashed was it is now the all-time highest grossing spring movie opening, the April movie opening the record-holding opening for a PG-13 movie, wow. the single largest amount of money ever made on a Saturday or Sunday. So both days, it has the highest uh, uh, gross for. Um, it has the highest three-day gross, uh, $10 million over The Force Awakens, of course, for the, for the three days there. Um, and The Force Awakens holds the gross for the next 10 days, right? Wow. Like They okay. have the yeah, highest yeah, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. But Infinity War's on pace to steadily continue to beat that as the next few days goes on. So it's up to you guys to get out there and watch it again and again. Go do it. Tell all your friends. You know, it's definitely one of those flicks that I think as you watch it, you know, over, you're going to catch things yes. and, and really appreciate, you know, kind of like when, when you've, when you've seen the end of a movie and then you go back and watch it and you see all mm-hmm. like kind of the build up, And then even afterwards, when you go and read up about it and you find out how close things are to certain pieces of source material, once mm-hmm. again, man, Marvel studios, you know, I know everyone's gonna be like, but Hey, Venom is Marvel, yeah. but it's associated with, you know, Sony runs the deal there. Marvel studios movies, man. They just, they just do it so good. Yeah. I they're mean, like, Hey, why don't we take this comic and make it a movie? Who do I know everybody's probably like, Hey man, well, how much are they paying you guys to say? All that? <laughs> no, man, we just really love these movies. I mean, they're, yeah. they're just so good. And, and yeah, they're going to, they're going to be around for a long time. All right. Another quick couple of little things right here. This just blew my mind. I thought it was super cool. It does not have the highest grossing summer start to the box office summer. Is it because it was in the spring? Yeah, it's because Ah. it was in April. In the last week of April, so they're counting it as the spring, the highest grossing summer start is still the 2012 Avengers movie. Well, hey, there you go. They they they're holding down the. Uh, I guess when you know you can't beat the the the, the king. Yeah, just let it ride. <laughs> you know? I mean, like I said, I'm gonna just say this right now, guys. I know me and El Bandito have talked outside the show. Like, I still feel that the original Avengers is still the almighty. 
you know, as far as like, you know, the quintessential comic book movie. But this is a great film. Oh, yeah. Definitely absolutely. check it out. Yeah, I think it, it holds up in every respect. But I think we were just at the right time in the right place. And it was kind of the first ensemble superhero movie that uh, had been built up the way that it was. Because obviously X-Men was an ensemble, but no one had all their original movies and then it came together. Yeah. And even the X-Men movies originally weren't as perfectly portrayed as a lot of the other Avengers were in their individual films and then the Avengers as a whole. How close was the original comics? But last but not least, and I think, again, this is super cool, they do not have the record for the single biggest market share of an opening weekend. you know. So basically, everyone who went to the movies, how many of them went to see Avengers by itself? Oh, okay. Right? They have an 84.3 market share. So 84% of the people that went to the movies went to see Infinity War. Wow, okay. But what's funny is the record holder had 84.5% of the market share. So it's only wow. a 0.2 difference. It's held by Avengers Age of Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, the Disney executives have to be sitting in their chairs a big old made of money, <laughs> you know. Their, of their money. chairs just made of gold. Made of Iron Man suits, <laughs> heads of Iron Man, golden, <laughs> just sitting there, just smiling. I just know, being, you know. And hey, man, we're almost twenty movies in, and like these are still rolling strong. Who knows? Yeah. This could be another ten, fifteen years of movies before. Well. Yeah, it could go on forever. It's, it, it's almost like the the only record, the only thing I'm anticipating now, like, is what's going to be the one Marvel movie I go see, and I'm like, that sucked. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gotta happen it's at gonna some happen. point. Jason H, thanks for joining us, buddy. I see you out there, man. <laughs> he knows what's about, man. Let's be honest. Jason H, this should be the greatest Royal Rumble, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on, though, we got some other fun stuff. We're talking about Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, you know it, man. You know, this is a highly anticipated game. next game coming out from Rockstar Games, known for GTA and, of course, the Red GTA. Dead Redemption uh, series. Uh, the thing that we want to talk about is that, uh, the, uh, just so you know, El Bandito, the, the date hasn't been moved. It's still in October when the release is coming. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> but what they're saying is that on May 2nd, a new trailer is going to come out and like they're going to show off some of the things that they've added to why the game was extended. Oh, you know? okay. So I've heard from many people that have been following this game that it's going to have a massive multiplayer part to it and and just all kinds of different stuff i mean i love the western genre yes i thought these were i thought the first one was a great game but man like yeah i I can't wait to see what rockstar cooks up for this one yeah especially a big open world kind of setting like that i know the first game almost had a little too much story for me i I wish (laughs) it let go of the reins a little bit and from what i understand this is supposed to be more of the west world sort of red dead where we could do whatever the hell we want which i'm really looking forward to even though like i'm sorry what is it the second episode just came out i think that show sucks I don't oh, like the new Westworld. Oh, oh, Westworld? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't I caught up it. on it yet, but I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Cause I'm I, not even going to watch the second season. I hated the first one that bad. I'm wow. Not watch it. The first season or the, the first episode of the second season? The first season. The first I got gotcha, you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, so moving on from the Western world, we're going to get back into, well, I guess the... the Still the Western <laughs> world over there in Germany. You know? Oh, man, uh, this is a pretty funny story, man. So... Uh, A police in a German neighborhood responded to a report of domestic abuse. You know, some some people, some neighbors heard stuff was going on, so they called them in and said, Yeah, that's not funny. Why would you say that? Well, the the end thing is kind of funny. So (laughs) the cops came bursting in, I guess, you know, the people. (laughs) And it turns out that uh, a couple and an instructor. Did you see the comments? Look at the comments. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> bam bam bigelow now bam bam bigelow wasn't there but uh there was a couple and their instructor who were putting on that they were doing a japanese bondage class so you know that's why there was so much noise <laughs> <laughs> they were going all uh hanzo the razor in there huh? <laughs> pretty much man and so the kinky trio invited the officers to join the class which they politely declined. <laughs> I'm surprised because German officers, you think they'd be like, 
you know? Yeah, oh, I did that one. Did. <laughs> is there perhaps something I could do to so, participate in this class? Is this like, you know, Fifty Shades of... Uh, <laughs> of uh, Police. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Fifty Shades of Blue. So, oh, there you, go. there you go. You got that. That's a headline right there. That's a parody <laughs> someone's going to make out there, and I am I just lost out on all of it. Yeah. And, <laughs> <All that> money. <laughs> and, and I think one of the tools they were using was called the Bam Bam Bigger Row. <laughs> <laughs> so silly <man. laughs> all right well fans of uh the new uh the new game far cry 5 will have a little fun with this one uh, an enraged cow in texas apparently attacked cars on a rural road uh-oh <laughs> so th- this cow was pretty pissed off uh, appar- uh an, uh, an officer arrived and they tried to kind of like nudge the cow to get off the road like with, mm-hmm. with the squad car and I guess the cow started attacking the car so furiously <laughs> that the officer just drove away and the cow was chasing the car and oh, eventually man. it ran out into the woods the cow is still at large, oh, apparently. So. Did, did you ever see me, myself, and Irene? Yes. You remember yeah. that cow? <laughs> that was crazy, man. Dude, I'm telling you. So, yeah, so all you folks out there in Texas, be careful. Mm-hmm. You talk about Bigfoot, you talk about Bam Bam Bigoro. <laughs> now you got to watch out for this cow. I think they should name him Bam Bam Bigoro. <laughs> <laughs> oh we got to talk about you know we love to talk about events guys you know mm-hmm. that's always our thing we love going to events you know uh daytona beach comic-con the bocas uh film uh f- uh sh- shooting uh, uh <laughs> the film the on-set filming it's shooting and shooting. It's <laughs> shooting film you know but we got to talk about cinco de mayo hey. which is coming up this saturday but you know what guys we need to know where the party's going down. Heck yeah, man. Give us a buzz, man. El Bandito will be there. He'll be there with bells on. He'll bring the corona. Man, let's let's have a blasty. Let's celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Why don't you tell everyone what this holiday's about? Oh man, you know, I always just thought about is, you know, just drinking as much as you can. That's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a Saturday. Yeah. No. <laughs> but um, you know, like you said, man, I you know. I, I I saw a funny thing like uh, 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 right after St. Patrick's Day where mm-hmm. it was like, all right, we could all stop pretending to be Irish. And yeah. then when Cinco de Mayo, we could all get together and drink again. I know, right? <laughs> uh, who doesn't love beer and guacamole? That's like the best thing in the universe. But yeah, if you guys know of a place that we should go check out for Cinco de Mayo, that's in Florida, uh, <laughs> you know, let us, I, well, who knows? Just let us know where the <laughs> hot stuff is going down. As long as it's not in Texas around <laughs> Bam Bam Bigger the yeah. cow. If, if, if there's any at a Japanese bondage house, let me know, man. I'll be there. <laughs> That's right up your alley, huh? Some uh, some Coronas, uh, guacamole, and uh, whips and chains. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, definitely, you guys let us know in the comments if you know any awesome things that are going on for Cinco de Mayo. But, you know, maybe we'll have some stories to sh- – well, I don't know. This is kind of a – we try not to go too hardcore <laughs> on this show. But maybe we'll share some stuff next week. But I think that will wrap it up for Podunk News. Absolutely, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into our our final segment here and let's check out the summer movie breakdown <laughs> jason h said taco bell yeah. <laughs> hey it's a party <laughs> i'll go somewhere where they got some kick-ass nachos man there you go Love there you go shit. nachos we, we, are good yeah but yeah, so yeah, you know, we've talked about Venom, which isn't coming out until October. Mm-hmm. But man, there's so many wild movies coming out this summer. And like El Bandito said earlier, we always like to run through them and just kind of tell you guys if we're going to check them out. And you can tell us if you're a fan. Yeah, we thought we'd do something a little extra fun tonight. What we're going to do is we took all the titles off of all the movies tonight. So we're going to throw up an image. And if you can guess what it is, throw it down in the comments before anybody else. And you'll win an official Power Hour no prize. How about that? <laughs> Our love. That's what you you win. You you always have our love just for showing up, guys. This so. is your throw. Oh, we, we we love to throw you guys up some love, man. If, if, if you know, but uh, we're 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 getting ready to load up some movies right I now. I know. We'll show you guys some love later. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Can anyone guess what this movie is? I don't know. <gasps> oh man. <laughs> they, then uh, I I think I've seen this 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 uh, poster before. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Oh. oh giving them a little time well it's not taco (laughs) bell well this movie is coming out in about three weeks so i'm super excited for it man i went out and got me a brand new t-shirt to rep it tonight because i knew it was going to be in our summer movie breakdown i'm excited as hell to see it when the last one came out on february 14th i was super psyched it's great to see this moved into the summer because it just goes to show that this 
the 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 original that this is a sequel to was the highest grossing rated R movie of all time. Breaking so, records left and right, Marvel. Yeah. So since they put it out in February and it made that kind of jack, man, they pushed it over to the summertime to be part of the great big summer movie blockbuster season, man, and that is wicked awesome. Oh, man, I see an answer in the comments, and it's close, but not exactly. Oh, oh, oh look, he got you, he got you. Oh, Deadpool <laughs> 2. That's right, it's Deadpool 2, man. Jason H. killing it out there. Thanks thanks again for hanging out with us, man. And, yeah, I'm super psyched about this. All the trailers have been fantastic. They've been super fun. Who's the character that you guys are most stoked to see, man? Is it Domino? Is it Bedlam? Is it Shatterstar? I mean, they got so many good new people jumping in this movie. Is it Peter? Some people like Peter. Hey, man. And you're forgetting Cable. Yeah, Cable. <laughs> Josh Brolin, dope. man. If he knocks it out of the park twice this year. Yeah, woo. <laughs> yeah that guy's going to be like, next movie I want to make. Let me see who has the biggest budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's like, can I do one more? I'm not like half CG. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he loves that, man. Come oh, on. Yeah. If I was an actor and they're like, just do what you're doing right now. That's all you have to do. And then you see like uh, poor Chris Evans out there hanging off of buildings and pulling down <laughs> helicopters with his bare hands. You're like, well, that's, I got it easy. <laughs> He's going to be like, listen, if they ever do make that Goonies sequel, can you guys just CG me in there? I don't want to be there. <laughs> and they'll just make him look like Thanos. <laughs> I don't even remember his name, but they'll be like, hey, man, you got pretty buff. <laughs> Where we had those like, little stretchy things there. <laughs> All right, so what's next? All right, next next up. I think we skipped one here. Let's back okay. it up one. Yeah, here we oh, go. Oh, yeah. This, this one should be pretty yeah, easy. This is, we're starting them off easy. They'll get harder as they go along here. But Shatterstar, for real, definitely Shatterstar looks pretty wicked, man. I love the way they kept his costume so close to the original comic, too, with that weird like helmet-type bandana-y thing that he has. I have to say, man, I know a lot of times we mess with Party Man Will about, like, you know, DC, like, you know, would you really want to see them in that authentic costume? Yeah. Man, when it comes to, like, the, the Deadpool movies, you're kind of like, they do look pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there's there's certain times when those iconic elements from a costume really need to be there. And the big square handles on Shatterstar's uh, katanas and stuff and his goofy headband like you kind of need those elements to be in there just to remind you of the classic character and I guess that was the thought process when they're like let's put a big ass goofy tongue in there so maybe like you said it definitely goes with the comics but yeah yeah we'll just have to see how it goes oh but man we got an answer for this one already oh he totally did look at big Tom from Daytona Beach Comic Con he nailed it with the solo absolutely thanks tom no we know we're all excited to see what they do with solo you know regardless of what everybody felt about the last jedi i mean i know you could go back and watch el banto el banditos and eyes like uh uh evisceration uh, of the poor last jedi film that we we just didn't care for i thought it was like a thesis we kind of like broke it down yeah yeah yeah, maybe but yes solo super excited to see what they do i really like the casting so far did you see the trailer before infinity war yes what do you think uh i have no interest in seeing this movie whatsoever (laughs) so i hate to be that way but i'm just i'm so burnt on star wars stuff that like almost every movie they make i don't like um i'll probably end up seeing it and i'm sure that i will like it more than i like the like episode six and or seven seven and eight gotcha you know just because it seems more akin to rogue one which i did like um, but I just I have a feeling that this is just going to be um, you remember Han Solo had a blaster and do you remember <laughs> Chewbacca made the weird sounds and I'm like I don't I could just watch the old movie I don't need to I you but know, if it has a good original story I'm gonna dig it so I'm I de- open. I, but, de- I definitely liked Rogue One what they did yeah. so I think I, I will definitely appreciate well, this well, one th- more th- think about it in this sense if you right now I'm gonna put you right on the spot dude all right and I'll I'll, I'll take this Pepsi challenge with anybody out there right tell me what this movie's about uh han solo meeting chewbacca for the first time and going on one of their first few adventures with lando yeah. cards that, that's what i mean <laughs> you, you don't know you just know that it's it's characters you know yeah. no you're right so i'm you're like right. well then what's the story of the movie i have no idea we are gonna see the kessel run though <laughs> yeah are we we'll see the kessel run and i bet there'll be a lightsaber somewhere in the movie but there may be i, I don't know han solo is gonna swear <laughs> Con- considering they haven't told us what the movie's about, yeah. I'm a little bit like, I'm willing to bet it's about nothing. 
and that it's got I'm Woody not Harrelson enjoy. in it. <laughs> yeah, Woody Harrelson's dope, man. I love Woody Harrelson. Look out, it's a giant Woody. <laughs> Can I get your autograph? <laughs> we got to keep it rolling, man. All right, all right. We're running out of time here. Let's move to the next movie. All right, any guesses on this one? This one, even I looked at this poster and was like, what is this? <laughs> this one's a tough one. It is, man. I'm going to say, if you went and saw A Quiet Place, you know, a pretty mm-hmm. popular horror film recently that came out, sci-fi horror, you know, you may have uh, saw the trailer for this one. This one very much looks like a summer film, though. It reminds me of, like, a really cool 80s summer film, you know? Meatballs. Like a- That's what it makes me think of. Meatballs. <laughs> meatballs? And, uh, Police Academy. I think a National Lampoon. That's true, know? too. Like, all those, like, yeah. we should find out what, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't just one artist. It could have been, it man. No, been, no, in the yeah. time, you know. Yeah, because I mean, I, I mean, even Animal House, like the way yeah. it like was like all the uh, characters mm-hmm. of. Because remember, they always had kind of had like big heads. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. They're definitely caricatures. Yeah, absolutely. <gasps> oh, we got an answer. Check it out. Oh, right Jason there. L coming in with the action points. Hide the Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Action point. I'm. I, I have a funny reason why I'm actually excited about this okay. film. It's about Johnny Knoxville. Not Johnny Knoxville, but his character yeah. goes and he takes over this this park, but it turns into like, you know, all like very daredevil like rides. <laughs> like they're very unsafe. Nice. You know? But nice. everyone goes there because it's just, you know, you could drink beer all over the place and just act crazy. This is actually based on an actual uh theme park in New Jersey. Oh, cool. That Members of my family used to tell me that their parents would bring them there <laughs> because they could just drink throughout the Because, you know, back, I mean, nowadays I think you can get a beer at Disney, but back sure. in the day there was no beer, you know, or wine. Giant turkey yeah. legs. Yep, yep, yep. But yeah, people would love to go to this water park because, yeah, they could just drink beer all day while their kids practically ended up in hurt, the hospital. Hurt themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They used to say there was like this lunge thing that they would sit in that, like, it wasn't properly balanced. So, like, <laughs> most of the times you'd go flying off the edge and, like, hurt your leg and stuff and the guy would be like hey get up from there get back on the top you know? i know they're like he was clowning around that's what they say to kids when kids get you were clowning around that's why you got <laughs> yeah stop screwing around man. Yeah. so yeah but this is cool i haven't heard anything about this but i looked at this poster thing and was like dude it's a johnny knoxville movie so i'm i'm down i, I like the guy too absolutely so. man like i said i think because of just that that it's being based on that old it, i think it was yeah. called action i think it was just called action park okay so they've changed the name but it's absolutely based on that old place from the 80s and se- <laughs> the 70s and 80s so. super cool man yeah. all right let's jump into our next flick let's see what we got we've got this ooh, mysterious maybe a cyber thriller kind of thing is that tom hardy <laughs> Is it? I don't no, think so. He kind of looks like Tom Hardy and Henry Cavill had a kid. <laughs> that's who this is. Hey, wait, is that a CGI uh, goat or beard <laughs> on him? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's just Tom Hardy and Henry Cavill's mustache had a kid, and this is who they ended up with. <laughs> now, I, I think I've heard more about people being like, you know, this movie's like a song that I heard once. Like, I think Mr. Fusion has named me like, you know, 10 Megadeth songs that could be on this movie soundtrack. <laughs> it, it could be the cover of a really cool album. Sure, sure. You know? I love the red. I think the red's really nice, very bold, you know? What's so funny is like it'd be awesome if this was a cover of a music album that this was just like one of their fans. Yeah. And they just kind of like didn't tell him what to do. They just took a picture of him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, what? But his face just does that kind of fuzziness on one side. <laughs> They're like, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> well, I don't see any calls coming up for this one. It's definitely not walking tall. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are, are, are we going to win the no prize for this one? I think we will. Why All don't right. you tell me t- what it is, Al Bandito? All right. Upgrade? Upgrade. <laughs> is this the sequel to Idiocracy? <laughs> <laughs> that we've all been desperately waiting for. No, this movie comes out June 1st, and it's just like I said. I'm pretty sure it is a cyber thriller, but I don't know much more about it than that. Do you? No, I know that the guy becomes, like, uh, enhanced. Like, enhanced. Like, you know, he's not... Yeah, I wouldn't say he's, like, a, a, a Terminator or whatever, but he has, mm-hmm. like stuff inside of him that like makes him better you know he says uh uh, my cpu is a null net processor (laughs) a learning computer computer. (laughs) but i mean i've seen like some clips from the trailer and it looks like he's just kicking the crap out of everything because he's like yeah but like i know mr fusion's super stoked about this so man if you're in the comments be sure to throw us down some more stuff about upgrade absolutely but here this this is what i think we're gonna get some we're gonna get some responses on let's let's let's, see see who's quick on the trigger out there you guys ready you ready do it um what do you guys think of this one here my favoriteest actress of all time the lovely the hilarious sandra bullock i love this girl i like my cousin 
She got me these eight by ten photos of her. I don't know where she got them. They're gorgeous. You know, I I framed them. I keep them in my room. I love this girl so much. Man. How much clothes is she wearing in those? Photos? A lot of clothes. <laughs> She's very classy, Sandra Bullock. Hey, man. I have to say, I think if you were going to name this movie, you'd call this "Sexy Woman's." <laughs> I would. I would. Oh man, I think we got an answer down oh, there. Oh, lightning fast. Jason L is on it with Ocean's Eight. That's right. Sandra Bullock herself is playing the sister of George Clooney's Danny Ocean. And she is putting together her own little heist movie here where they are going to rob the Metropolitan while they're having some sort of diamond exhibit thing. So looks pretty good. I have to say I really didn't care for the sequels to Ocean's Eleven. I thought <laughs> Ocean's Eleven itself was really, really oh, good. Oh, yeah, that was a great film. Uh, but given the time that's been in between, I have hope that someone actually wrote a good script, and that's why they're doing this. It's, it's no longer a cash grab, but about really kind of reinvigorating the franchise. And it is a little, uh, you know, there, there's a very small worry of, like, are they just doing this because, like, what if we did this movie with women? And I hope that doesn't <laughs> become a trend that's like, let's just do this movie but with women. Like, oh, so I don't want to see that. It's but, like the Ghostbusters route, like you kind of say. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a bunch of female leads, but just write them a new story. All, every story in the universe hasn't been told already. There's a lot of great stuff out there for them to do. It, to me, there's there's nothing worse than saying women are every bit as equal as men, so let's make them do exactly the same stuff we did. No, let them do something better, you know? So, But that's why I think that this is going to be a great script and a really good movie. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. I definitely am. Well, I think what's cool is that they've really let some time pass since the last yeah. one. I mean, I'm sure it was like 2011 or something like that, the, la the last sequel. Yeah. But, yeah, they were. They were kind of just always stacking it up. Now, was was she ever in any of those movies? No, like, she was, was not. No. So it's a brand new character? Yeah, it's supposed to be that okay. she was in prison the whole time the other movies <laughs> took place. So Absolutely. Oh, we got some love down here for Anne Hathaway. Yeah, I think Kate Blanchett is in this, too, right? Isn't I she the blonde so. there? I think so, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I got to just say, man, it's going to sound bad, but anytime I hear like Ocean's Eleven or any of those movies, all I can think about is that Yin Yang Twin song. I don't remember that song. What song is that? <laughs> I, I don't think I want to say like the actual lyric on, uh, okay. <laughs> but I'm sure anyone out there will. <laughs> I always think of the scene in the second movie where Don. It, it might be the first movie where Don Cheadle's setting off an EMP blast. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. like covers his groin because he's like, I don't know what kind of radiation this thing is going to put off. Who, that cracked me up. Was it Jet Li that was like hiding in like the canisters? Uh, no, so no. I think he was. Um, he hadn't been anything. I think he was introducing that that actor. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, because I remember that. It was just they they were fun. Like yeah. I always liked those. Yeah, because he was a real contortionist. Remember, he bent up and yeah, fit like a cube or yeah, something. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, let's keep moving on. You guys are doing great, man. Yeah. Thanks for sticking it out and having fun with it. Uh oh. This this one might be an easy one. I don't know. Oh, come on. Let's just see. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Give I don't it to know me. where I don't know where Kelly Jade's at, man. She'd be all over this. She's a super huge fan of these uh, uh, these flicks, man. I know we're saying, come on, give it to me. I know this is what <laughs> Disney fans have been saying for years. Give it to me. Yeah. You're like, uh, where's it at? Oh man. I, oh, let's see. Come on, guys. Let's call it out. Let's well, hear it. What do you think? It what, is? What, what is the title of this film? Now, I have to say, in the original of this movie, I liked the fact that Jason Lee played the bad guy. I love Jason Lee. I think he's yes. great in everything. Yes. Yeah. That, what, what was his name in in that? Syndrome. What? Syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> the S stands for syndrome. That's awesome, man. Now, I gotta say about this movie, like, tell me what you think. Like, I kind of thought they were gonna make a sequel. Oh, there you go. I gave you guys a hint. It's a sequel. I know. Well, there's a uh oh, James A. coming in with Incredibles two. There you go. Man, look, he joined. Got an answer right. Got an official no prize. He's on the board. Let's give him it. <laughs> oh yeah, you know that's definitely you know that's the that's the new Power Hour love tap to you guys <laughs> right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Incredibles two man. Now let me ask you something. Yeah, I always thought if they made a sequel to this. I thought like the kids would be older. Like I thought maybe they'd yeah. be like a teenager and the little one would be kind of like yeah the youngest kids age. Uh, I, again, I really I'm not liking the look of the trailer of this movie because it's very Mr. Mom, you know. And again, <laughs> it's kind of like. That women push thing where they're like, oh, let's do a movie about Fantastic Girl or whatever her name is. I don't know. All I but know is what, what's the mom? It's Elastigirl. Name? That's uh, what it is. Elastigirl, man. She's got some big thighs, though, man. She I mean, does. Look, look at that. 
She does. She looks like she can kick through a two by four, man. That's what you want out of a hero is power. I mean, look at hers compared to uh, Mister Incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, but like, so it's cool that like she's going out and being like the figurehead. That makes a lot of sense. But then it's like, oh, he's just the dumb dad who doesn't know how to take care of his kids. And I'm like, yeah. that's such a played out kind of tropey way to do that. That I, I don't want to see a family film out of these guys. Like, show me something incredible. Well, let me tell you, man. Being amongst like some small children for a lot of time, man, yeah. like. That little that little baby man, Jack, I, Jack. I, yeah, he, he <laughs> I, I've seen them and they, they really can act it, that that crazy. You know, they're they're such kind of a clone of the Fantastic Four, yeah. you know, <laughs> that like Jack Jack being like Franklin, yeah, and having the most any power one. that he wanted, uh, is it's it's kind of neat in a way, but it's kind of like. Disney, you own the Fantastic Four. Like, do something worthwhile with that. <laughs> and I, I love the Incredibles too, but come on, like. Oh, Jason L's got. He goes. She's got the booty. <laughs> what is she that? Does. What is that rule? What is it? Rule thirty four. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything look, about. Look that. Look that up after the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one here, man. I you guys might not get this one. I don't Jason know. L, where are you at? I know this, you... one, this one's tough, bro. But I honestly, I didn't see the movie that came out before this one. Oh, really? Um, well, yeah, which may surprise a lot of people because the original, original, I absolutely love. I adored it as I was a kid. It terrified the crap out of me when I saw it, but I absolutely loved it. And um, I, I like all the movies they did. I know some of them are terrible, but I still like them just because of how terrible they are. But because, uh, you know, they're like, hey, we need to get back to the island because I left my wallet. <laughs> and you just got to go back for it. I had a photo in there. I mean, the one part when it was the kid, you know, I mean, I kind of understood, but it was just so bad. They're like, we're going to get Alan Grant, (laughs) Grant, (laughs) to come back. (laughs) It's a a little wonky, but uh, don't know the official name. I don't don't know how I feel about this one. Oh, wow. You've got to watch it, Bandito. I do, man. I do. I'm definitely stoked about seeing it. I love Chris Pratt. I think Bryce Dallas Howard is one of the most beautiful women on the planet. So I love that she's in there. I can't believe I missed this in theaters like a chucklehead because it was in the theaters for like 82 weeks or something. (laughs) But uh, but I'm definitely going to grab it. I'm definitely going to see the sequel, especially since... The Grandmaster himself, Jeff Goldblum, is going to make an appearance. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to excuse Dr. Malcolm. <laughs> I really hate that man. But <laughs> You're going to have some dinosaurs in your Jurassic World, The Fallen Kingdom, guys. Everyone's like, there I don't you know go. the subtitle. <laughs> they didn't know the subtitle, but you got him. Well, when's it coming out for them so they know when they can check it out? Uh, 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 uh comes out june 22nd <laughs> dude this this shot though right here i think very is a nice. very cool i yeah. mean look at chris pratt over there mm-hmm. and i mean it just goes to show how like monstrous the tyrannosaurus rex still is no matter yeah. how many bigger dinosaurs they can make how many more <laughs> made-up dinosaurs they come up with or whatever but no like uh they show a lot of stuff in the trailers about him like training a dinosaur or something that i think is retarded but <laughs> i'll have to watch the first movie and see what's up because i look at that in this trailer and i'm just like are you freaking serious? It looks like <laughs> it looks like uh, like Bonk's Adventures, like that old NES game, where the baby was riding a dinosaur or something. I'm like, that's what? true. <laughs> but um, hey, we'll see what happens. It might be great. So, all right, this is a movie based on last year. No, uh, but this it? one should be pretty easy for you guys yeah. to get. Yeah, its name may be right there. So. <laughs> I mean, besides just posting a picture of the hat, there was really no other way to conceal yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we could have got some stills or something from the movie. Now, if you guys can also tell us which numbered movie this would be in the series, Ooh. you'll get some extra points there. Yeah. Let's see. Jimmy Buffett makes a cameo. How can it be bad? <laughs> <laughs> does he does he become the cheeseburger? Dude, do you ever see that South Park with Jimmy Buffett? He's just like, F you, Jimmy Buffett. I love that. <laughs> That's all I think about when I think of Jimmy Buffett now. So, oh, man, we got the captain in the house, Joel Kilmer, man. Oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> he's probably like, what are these guys talking about? <laughs> I know. He's like, first purge. <laughs> <laughs> well, Captain, to catch you up, man, we're over here. We want people to guess what these upcoming summer movies are, b- judging by the picture that we have here. This I one's know. not too hard. And we, we know that Captain Joel is a master at the one finger typing, so <laughs> just burn him out there real quick and hit enter. Spelling doesn't count. 
So. Oh, man. We already have some answers in there. We I think do. this one's going to Jimmy Z. Oh, man. The first Purge and the fourth movie. Is it the fourth movie? It is. Now, I can't believe they made four of these movies. It, <laughs> now, this one chronologically is, you know, being it's the first, it's going to be a prequel sure. to the other one. But, yes, it is the fourth movie in the series. Very cool, man. Well, it's coming out July 4th, which is celebrating, uh, you know, some America. So yeah, Absolutely. You now, go. you know the premise of the movie? like um, Of the Purge? Yes. Yeah, like... Like they have one night where all crime is legal. And yes. It's like the most ridiculous premise ever. Is, <laughs> I'd rather watch a movie about trained dinosaurs. <laughs> but uh, all right, you know, Captain Joel, if you're out there, man, keep your fingers on your keyboard. You get your thumbs ready if you're using your phone, man, because this one is tailor made for you. But I know a lot of these Thunder Speed kids out here are going to get this quick, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, man, what movie is this? What is it? What, what is, it, is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, uh, Joel put, hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy Z sneaking in. He slid in with Ant-Man and the Wasp. All right, extra points if you could name their identities. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, yes, absolutely, man, you got it. The next film in the Marvel Universe, and, we, you know, I, I, we got to kind of talk about this one without doing any spoilers for Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what do you think about this one, Bandito? I cannot wait to see it. I think the trailers where they show uh, Michael Douglas, you know, taking a whole building and shrinking it and carting it away. I think them throwing the Pez dispenser and it turns into the size of a truck and crushes a car <laughs> is amazing. Like, I loved the first movie of this. Um, Luis, he's my guy, man. Oh, you know? that is... I would say if there was a character in the Marvel Universe that is El Bandito, I think it would match up with Luis. I know. Now, see, like, you asked me what I think about, like, this Ant-Man and the Wasp movie that's coming out right now. But I have to say, right, that I heard from my cousin's friend who was she was talking to at a party that her friend Ernesto, who they used to go with back in the day, but now they don't really talk no more, said that this movie was freaking hot. <laughs> that's so awesome, man. I love that dude. He's amazing, <laughs> man. Oh, we got Jim. Man. Jimmy Z's fired up tonight. He said Hope and Scott. No so doubt. I think that's close enough. You know, you didn't say uh, uh, Hank Pym. You know, that yeah. was the original, of course, but now, of course, uh, I was Scott looking for Lang. some Hope Pym and some yeah. Scott Lang action, but <laughs> whatever. I guess we'll give you some partial credit. <laughs> now, I think Wasp looks great. Yeah. Like, I think her costume yeah, yeah. looks cool. Oh, her costume and stuff is good, oh. too. Yeah. <laughs> Evangeline <laughs> Lilly, man. She is gorgeous, man. I, I think that chick's awesome. And she looks formidable. I love how they showed her fighting in the first film. So, you know, now that she has wings and lasers, which that technology they didn't have <laughs> for the first time, man, uh, she's just going to be a, a, just just a beast, man. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I, I really loved the uh, first Ant-Man movie. Yeah. I thought it was so fun. So I, I think this is going to be a great feeling. Um uh, you know, a, you know, after the marvelous movie that was Infinity War left you so uh, excited, you know, this movie's gonna mm. really get 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 some good feels and laughs coming at us. Absolutely, it's gonna be a blast, man. Now, again, this is supposed to take place before the events of Infinity yes. War, so it should be super fun to see how everything plays out uh, as far as this movie goes and the rest of the Marvel universe goes until oh, yeah. we get to see the. Uh, Second part of Infinity War. Everything come together next next uh, summer ish. Yes, yeah. yeah. There's yeah probably next spring. They want to keep that th those awards going. <laughs> oh, look at that! James, James Jimmy Z out there said that there's a new trailer that's coming out either today or tomorrow. So we'll have to look for that, man. Hey, you know, does he have Anthony too now? Th that, I'd have to say. <laughs> If I think we're it's gonna Anthony, right? Or yeah, yeah. If, if the most heartbreaking <laughs> moment of any Marvel I know, movie I know. was the death. Single-handedly, the saddest death in any Marvel movie. <laughs> yeah, just, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, Anthony. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Let's show him some love. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely, man. We got to do like the Anthony, like, uh, you know. <laughs> little, yeah, like, we'll do a remember. montage, talk about him in the comics and stuff, and then how he came up in the movie, how he's portrayed and everything. But, All right, let's jump to our next movie here. 
Oh man, talking about jumping to our next movie. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. Now this now everyone's like, dude, that's Ant Man, right? He's so tiny. Look how small he is. This is a totally different movie, guys. Do you know what it is? Look, this it definitely like isn't a, a a lesson in uh, <laughs> what it be physics we got going on here. <laughs> but beautiful yeah. shot though. I mean, I think that looks great. I love it. It is really cool. Ooh, I, look at that. Jimmy Z just lost himself a point. <laughs> it is not Rampage. That movie's already out. This will be coming out July 13th. <laughs> Maze Runner. No, no, no. Yeah, but, you know, you guys are close there. You are. Yeah. You are. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Now, this is getting good. I will say this. Jimmy Z was totally on point, though, because this is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There you go, guys. Here's your hint. KDD, where are you at? Oh, Rampage is out already. Look, KDD wants to lose some points, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she's saying that Rampage was already out. The Rock with one leg? <laughs> Now I think they're trolling us. I know. They put Clue. Now it's the next guest. (laughs) Clue. (laughs) The remake of Clue. (laughs) Now that's awesome. I think he did it on the 12th floor of the... Oh, oh, man. Hold on. Mr. Mr. Kilmer out there. Captain Joel says the most heartbreaking part of any Marvel movie is his personal nemesis, Stan Lee's cameo. (laughs) Well, man, he must hate every movie. I know, right? (laughs) I thought he would be taller. (laughs) Absolutely. That's going to be the... that's going to be the final war. It's going to be <laughs> Captain Joel versus Stan Lee. <laughs> and Stan Lee's going to be like, I thought he would be tall. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, Joel, the internet thought you died 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to have to throw oh, it out there. No, 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 our- no. Oh, no. somebody got well, it. We got it. Look, somebody got it. Our buddy. Jake H, our old Megacom buddy, Jake H, man, he's in the house and he named it jumping to the tw- or the like I don't know like hundred and twentieth <laughs> floor of that skyscraper. You know it, guys. That's what it is. The Rock is going to be in a bunch of movies this summer. This one is called Skyscraper, where he is working on one of these giant buildings. I believe it's in Dubai, right? The yes, largest building yes. in the world. And uh, his family gets trapped in the uh, midsection of the building, and he has to fight his way there while some bad guys are doing bad stuff. Who knows? It's a Rock movie. It doesn't matter. He's going to be kicking people out windows of a 100-story building. Let's all go and see it. <laughs> July 13th. <laughs> July 13th. We'll all yes. be out there checking it out. So absolutely, Jake, what's up? <laughs> here we go. Right, what's we next? Got, I think uh, we're getting close to the end here, guys. But what do you guys think of this one? Ooh. Is this the new Ray-Bans commercial? <laughs> Has The Rock been in a good movie? Oh, man, Jason L. My heart <laughs> shot through the heart. <laughs> I love The Rock. Every movie he's in is great. Even The Tooth Fairy, so shut up. <laughs> oh, man, you know you just won uh, Katie D's heart there. <laughs> no. I mean, I even thought that one was pretty bad. Oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, I mean, Jumanji was pretty awesome. Yeah, Jumanji was, was great. Yeah, if you hadn't seen Jumanji, <laughs> that with uh, Karen Gillian, who actually plays Nebula, who I had no idea was such a remarkable super babe. <laughs> like, go check out Jumanji. That's a ton of fun. Mission Impossible Fallout, starring the worst actor ever <laughs> from Jimmy Z out there. Tom Cruise is a skip it. <laughs> Why? Oh, my gosh. Look at all the loves and likes we're getting for people hating on Tom Cruise. Maybe they're loving The Rock. We're a few seconds behind. Right? They, they just like him jumping up and down on Oprah's couch, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with Katie Holmes. I'm in love with Katie Holmes, too, man. She's fine as hell. Just so you guys know, you know, back in the day, Tom Cruise was possibly going to be Tony Stark. So just, just letting you know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was he was the, the front runner for it, man. But, you know, Mission Impossible Fallout's coming out. Now, you may think, I'm going to skip it. I don't care. You got to go and see the mustache. Come on. It ruined Justice League. <laughs> Let's go see Henry Cavill's mustache, man. He needed it for this film. And it's got Hawkeye. Come on. He's so, everyone's favorite Avenger. So this is Mission Impossible, <laughs> what, 600? Yeah. Like it's, uh, Mission Impossible 6 titled Fallout, which is the aftermath of Mission Impossible 5, which I haven't seen yet either because no, no one cares about these Mission Impossible movies. But I'm excited to see this movie. It makes me want to see the fifth movie. Uh, Michelle Monaghan is still in it. Um, uh, Big Rhymes. 
Uh, what? Isn't it Vig Grimes? Isn't that the... Uh, Ving Rames, yeah. Ving Rames. I thought you said Rick Grimes. I was Rick like, Grimes? No, he was, no at Rick... the, he was at the... Uh, he was at the... The, the, the Bocas, <laughs> yeah, filming, so... <laughs> But no, yeah, remember that, that was Marcellus Wallace. That's all I should have said. Marcellus yeah. isn't. <laughs> uh, if you've never seen a Mission Impossible movie, Jason L., go watch the third one. The first two are kind of, bleh, they're a total throwaway. But the third one was actually pretty awesome. The fourth one was a lot of fun, too. So I definitely want to check out the fifth and sixth one. The, the first one is so awful, especially if you were a fan of the show. I was a fan of the show. I used to watch it all the time with um, Martin Landau. And uh, I think that I think it's Peter Graves, right? Yes. Is the uh, the yeah, lead on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and th- it was just terrible. They totally dumped all over that original show in the first movie. Then the second movie was kind of like an action movie that meant nothing. But the third movie is directed by J.J. Abrams. It was kind of his big break. And that film really gives you the feel of Mission Impossible. He has a team. They're doing an impossible mission, and it's super fun. And so is the fourth movie. So both of those I enjoyed. Isn't John Lithgow in that one? Uh, no, he's not. That's not John Lithgow. No, he's not in any of those. Films. Okay, I, I forgot who the who the who like the one bad guy in. It's in Peter the... uh, Peter Seymour Hoffman. Or... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Is you're it Michael right. Seymour Hoffman? Yeah. What's his... Philip yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman. That's his name. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah. "Which one used the Metallica song?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not sure when that came in. It, it, the, I think the second movie was it. The second movie had the Limp Biscuit one. <laughs> yeah, take a look around. <laughs> yeah, that might have been the first one though. But I, I think it was the second one that had the Limp Biscuit one. Oh, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, hey. I wish they just keep it classic. The classic yeah. was the best. Yeah, that theme has always been really cool. It is. It is a great. Th- I think I, the best rendition of that was when Ace Ventura does it when he's just <laughs> scaling that wall at that rich guy's house. That That's was funny. awesome. Next. I wish there was actually a Fallout movie instead oh, of Oh, man. Joel Kilmer says he heard the Power Hour was the first impossible mission. <laughs> right here, baby. <laughs> yeah, it, it pretty much was. It was impossible to get Captain Joel in here. That's what was. <laughs> But we're working on it, man. You know you got an open invite, and we're going to squeeze you in one of these days. Oh, so. yeah. But let's move on to our next movie. We're nearing the end. We're in the final countdown. Ooh, can anyone guess this mysterious figure's identity? <laughs> now, it's funny. Like, Senior Bull actually sent me this image, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> what is this? I had to go look it up. And I was like, why is this a movie? Why is this a movie? But I don't have kids, so I guess that's why. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? <laughs> oh, poor Captain Joel's like, damn. <laughs> it's okay, Captain. <laughs> you know, we, we love you, man. Oh, let's give him some love. There you go. There you go. That's for you, Cap. There you go. Got some love taps. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Look at that, Cap. Well, Joel got one in there, man, with them lightning fingers. Pew, 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 well, pew, he, pew. He's definitely got some good guessing, but, uh, I mean, that's actually not the title of the oh, film. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's you, not the title of the film. You guys, You're very close with your first answer. It's not Paddington Bear. Look at how quick he put Paddington Bear. <laughs> now I think Miss Beverly's <laughs> typing out there. <laughs> Ted <James>. 3. <laughs> nice. I would love Ted 3. <laughs> that would be a great way yeah. to trick people. <laughs> it, especially because I was like, oh, I guess I don't have kids. So Because I would take my kids <laughs> to see Ted 3. Flash. Ah, uh, master of the Teddy universe. Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys. The one hundred acre fun. woods. You're all. You're so on the right track, so, Captain Joel. So he's close. right there. So. Oh no, Mister Fusion sneaks in with Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin. Tut tut. Looks like rain. <laughs> tut tut. Looks like rain. <laughs> <laughs> We're all excited to head back out to the hundred acre wood and see Winnie the Pooh and. What Come does on. Winnie the Pooh do? I don't know. He just eats be, honey. Be honest. You know, you're like, this movie sounds like poo. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I want to go see Eeyore. I love that guy. He makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> and I'm just like, at least I get off my butt and do something. So if you were on, Lewis in the Marvel Universe, are you trying to say you would be Eeyore in the 100 Acre Wood Universe? No, I wouldn't be. I just like him because he makes me feel better about myself. Mr. Fusion would so definitely lazy. be Tigger. I mean, no doubt about it. <laughs> Bouncing yeah. all around, yeah. jumping on shit. I, th- I think Party Man <laughs> Will would be uh, Eeyore. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Party Man. He just gets a little bummed out sometimes. <laughs> he has that spectrum of like super Party Man. And then sometimes he's like, oh, me. My life is fine. Everything's great. <laughs> Jason L. just asked, is Winnie a boy or a girl? I don't I don't know, Jason. You might have to go uh, I know. check that one yourself. <laughs> I know. Jason L.'s like, because I'd hit it. Whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come uh, on, man. Yeah, Catherine D. was like, boy. <laughs> yeah. She's like, Winnie is kind of a weird name for a guy. I guess it I never is. thought about that before. But the poo really seems like a surname for a man. I know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you going to the bank. Hello, Mr. Poo. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Crapo. That's part. Man, will knew a guy named Mr. 
Mr. <laughs> Mr. Crapo, and he called him Mr. Crapo. So Joel so says, I was uh, excited about Charbol the Owl and Chavez the Rabbit. The Rabbit. Wasn't the Rabbit the like, asshole guy? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Hey, at least you didn't say we were like Rue and like you like rode around in my little pouch or whatever. You know what though? I'm gonna agree with that. I probably am like that grouchy ass rat. <laughs> going around complaining about everything. Now about this movie, I mean I know it's kinda going in that whole uh like Beauty and the Beast jungle book, like where it's like bringing these characters to kinda like live real action. Life. Yeah. yeah. So I mean I think that might be kinda <laughs> cool seeing them in that, you know, way. But yes. I know Christopher Robin's like an adult. So it kind of huh. is like Ted. Yeah, okay. Disney, you're ripping off Ted. When he's a... <laughs> I know. Seth MacFarlane doesn't have a lot of money, bro. He can't just be ripping him off like that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Jason L. said, poo flashbacks from earlier. <laughs> no, man. Is Christopher Robin played by El Bandito? <laughs> oh, man. There you go. <laughs> he should be. Did you find poo? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone in the 100 Acre Woods would be safe, though. He's like, listen, if I start seeing... Little Are there bear- even any girls in the Hundred Acre Woods? I think I think Rue's mom. Like, remember she's walking around. Yeah. With, hey, who, who was Rue's dad? <laughs> I don't know. Probably Let's, Piglet. Let, Piglet was a guy or was he a girl? I think it was a girl. I think yeah. Piglet was a girl. God, the chicks in that universe suck though. There's <laughs> a boring mom lady and some like crybaby. A little uh, tiny pig. girl, a little yeah. shorty. No, but listen, if you were sitting in the park and suddenly Pooh showed up, what would be the first thing you'd think of? I don't think you'd be like, "Hey, Pooh." You'd be like, "What the hell did I take?" I mean, I'd be like, give, give me that honey. <laughs> give me that honey. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so I think we got what we got one more or two, two more, two for? more, two more. So we're so down much to the, fun with you to guys. The final, so the <laughs> the penultimate movie film. Let's check it out. Oh man, what is this? This one's a little tricky. <laughs> it's uh, there's only three real monsters in the world. There's Dracula, the Son of Kong, and Bigger Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger Jaws. <laughs> Uh, quit hitting on cartoon babes. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I was just saying they're not they're not my bag, baby. That's all it is. <laughs> like you'd be like, man, what was Ruth? I think Rue was the mom. No, Kanga. I think was yes. the mom. Yeah, KDD put that she would be Kanga. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Jason L. The Oops. Meg. Shut up, Meg. <laughs> oh wait, actually, I'm sorry, Jason L. Yeah, I think Jimmy actually because I think the the title of the movie is. The Meg. Oh man, are you gonna burn Jason L out there? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Oh, you know I those know, are the rules. We know. We know you're. Uh, you wanted gi- this coveted prize. <laughs> your giant heart, like like the giant heart of this giant uh, megalodon, was in the right place. But <laughs> you know. But yeah, this movie's about um, uh, a group of scientists are actually down in the Marianas Trench, mm. and they blow out a wall or something like that, and a megalodon comes out from behind. So it's been living down there for you know millions of years. And yeah, now it's coming to pretty much be Jaws, dude. I'm gonna give you whip, wicked, wicked props for not saying the Marinara Trench, because uh, I 100 percent convinced you were gonna say the Marinara Trench. You know, for for our fans and for those charboil linguists out there, <laughs> I should have. Yeah, I need to come up with one word per episode that <laughs> I mispronounce the the Marinara Trench. I'd like to go to the Marinara Trench. <laughs> oh man, look, look, J- J- Jason L. He's calling shenanigans. He thinks Jimmy Z looked it up on IMDb. Oh, but he's just <laughs> going down that calendar year. He's like, what are they going to talk about? Now? Maybe next know. year we need to mix these up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so they're not in order, right? <laughs> I like how uh, Captain Joel's like, it looks like my bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does he have like little miniature people? Like, I uh... think it's all his play toys when he's in the tub. <laughs> Dude, is like he his like a little steamboat? Is guy he like Francis stuff? from <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Francis is taking a bath. (laughs) That's awesome. But yeah, so Megalodon comes out and literally starts causing all kinds of trouble. And what do you think? You you know what I love about this is like I haven't seen a trailer or anything, but I know that Jason Statham is in the movie. Yes. And it's about Megalodons. And I'm like, dude, if Jason Statham just kicks the shit out of a Megalodon, like just kicks it like literally because he's like a martial artist, I'm going to love this movie. (laughs) This is like because you know what they say, if you can punch a shark right in the nose. It'll look at you and be like, dude, I was going to leave you alone, and now you punch me in the face, so I'm super going to bite you now. It's got a big-ass <laughs> nose, too, man. You see it in the film. It's a big schnoz. Yeah. But my favorite part of the trailer is he goes, it's a megalodon. <laughs> you know, he says it like, <laughs> Oh, Jason, stay the me, right? <laughs> but absolutely, man. I 
one of the reasons I'm looking forward to this movie is I know it's based on a series of books, and mm. it's been in like development hell forever. Right. Yes, you know? I had heard that. Yeah. So I mean, the fact that it actually got made, I think, is something. Um, you know, effects wise, I think it looks cool. It looks mm-hmm. pretty terrifying. Like yeah. when you see this giant ass shark. I have talked to some of my um, marine biologist uh, correspondents, you know, uh, Fred Rico out there. Okay. And he's like, yeah, dude, like, you know, he's like, I hate these shark movies, man. Yeah. He goes out there and swims with sharks like every week. And yeah, he's yeah. like, dude, these, you know, they're animals. You don't mess with them. They don't mess with you. He's yeah. like, they just kind of enforces but, the whole terror. But I, I do enjoy the fact that, like, this is ridiculous. Yes. You know, like, yeah. it's, it, it's like, uh, Pacific Rim level yes. monster coming yes. out of the water. And I like that because it's not just Jaws again, you know, yeah. or what was that movie that came out last year? It was actually pretty uh, good, but the one about the two girls in the water. Oh, the tw- 27 meters deep yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just a shark attack in them or whatever. I mean, hey, dude, everyone's been over to someone's house and they had some crazy dogs. So sometimes <laughs> an animal can just be kind of weird or not like you or whatever. Um, so I don't think it's that far-fetched, but yeah, it, it does kind of suck when people... They just think blanket every animal's like that, and and that's not the case. So, <laughs> I like Jason Lynn, LOL scientist. Yeah, right. I know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> Nerds. <laughs> but dude, we got one more we for got you guys. It. We got. We're gonna give Here you guys are. a minute. Stop. Stop typing your comments. Get ready. The movie's coming right now. I'm gonna click the button. First one in. Let us know what film you think this is. Ooh, oh man. man! Oh, I'm just waiting for it to pop. I know we got a little bit of an easy one on the end here. Let's see. Let's see. Pop, let's pop, see. pop. Scree with the pop, it's... pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joel popped in here. Wasn't yeah, it? he says I swim in the power hour of love executive pool, and you guys don't mess with me. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, Jimmy Z. <laughs> I just like some of the things here. Yeah. So Jimmy Z definitely got it, but we also got uh, Sharknado. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone put Sharknado. <laughs> I like how Jason Al tried to get in there. He's like, Slender and. (laughs) E.T. (laughs) E.T. That's awesome, man. But no. Yes. Hellblazer. We got a Hellblazer. There you go. But yep, we're on August 24th. They're making a movie of the legendary uh, copy pasta legend. Slender Man. Slender Man. Yeah, dude. This legend is very freaky to me. I don't like all the weird pictures and stuff. I think it's totally one of those things that you're like, dude, really? Like, why is this an urban legend? But uh, do you not understand the way light dilates through a lens? Okay. but <laughs> Well, you know, and it's one of those things, too, that... Um... James is cheating. James is straight up cheating. <laughs> They're calling you out, Jimmy Z. They man, don't like you. Man, the, 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 there's, there's not much love in the comments I know, that right? I... I think we've uh, we may have started a a, a, a power hour war <laughs> gone in here, but um, yeah, you know, like this was a, a what's cool is it's an internet ba- based legend. Yeah, you know, really. I mean, I'm, there may have existed some urban stuff back in the day, but you know that whole creepy pasta thing where people just share like scary stories that they try to pitch is true. You know, Slender Man has just become so popular. You know, they created those uh, online uh, video games about them and stuff like that. So it's just like the popularity keeps rising. I know there's been a bunch of documentaries about it, but this is actually the first time it's going to be an official movie that's actually about him, you know, killing people. Did, Did you say the creepy pasta? Yeah. What does that mean? I've Cre- never heard that. That's just a, it's a website where it's like a collection of various okay. uh, stories where pretty much you don't even have to submit like your name. You just submit it and then they post. Gotcha, as gotcha. long as it's something. I didn't that's... know if it was a horror mafia reference out there. I wasn't no. getting that. I didn't know. But that's a good. <laughs> they should use that. Yeah. Pasta, you know. But yeah, it's just, they, they, you know, someone like rather than saying, hey, that's a fan fiction. Sure. If someone says that's a creepy pasta, it's most likely uh, an ambiguous like. Um, uh, not maybe, you know, pretty much a story. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like an uh, urban legend that has no origin. Yeah, yeah. Usually, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a creator for it, but they at the time chose to just say, yeah, "I'm just going to share this because it's freaky as shit." Sure, sure. <laughs> go out, you know, if you want to keep stay keep yourself up all night, just go uh, YouTube creepy pasta stories oh, and listen man. to some. I'm serious, man. <laughs> these these Slender Man videos you see on there are a little creepy. It's one of those things where when you're watching it, you're super creeped out, and as soon as it's done, you're like, "That's dumb. I don't care." Hey, hey, uh, Joel's <laughs> calling out nose picking. Oh do, do man. We, do we 
Did pick our nose? I don't think so. I know I've got a wicked sunburn here, and I keep touching my face, though. I know, definitely. So we know. went out filming Boca's up in Palm Bay, man. <laughs> check out the videos and stuff that we put on the Power Hour Love, or check out their website, or check out Florida Today, where they have an awesome write-up about it. And I have a great sunburn, where over here there's no sunburn because they put the bottle, and then over <laughs> here I'm like wicked sunburn. So You're like Two-Face. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm like a quarter face because my down here is burnt, too. So you're a rabbit, quarter face. <laughs> wow, serious. I'm, I'm, I'm all sorts of a mess this week. So, But man, you know what hasn't been a mess has been tonight's power. It's been a ton of fun. You guys have been awesome. Thanks so much for participating. And man, we got something really cool to tell you guys about in the yeah. coming weeks. You know, since you guys have been participating so awesomely tonight, you know, May's around the corner. And last year we did something really fun. So we're bringing back for this May name that game oh yeah you know occasionally we're going to be posting up some old video game pictures maybe even some video and yeah. here in the comments you guys will be able to guess and then you know whoever gets them right man will tally up the points and just so you know at the end of the month there'll be an actual prize for you guys who win yeah, we may actually be playing some games live on the show and just oh, want yeah. you to guess what they are. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're really going to double down on our game in this summer, which should be super fun. So let us know what you guys thought of tonight's exciting, fun, super fun episode. Let us know what you think of the summer breakdown, Avengers Infinity War, what you think of the new Venom trailer, man. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, be safe. Catch us next week, Monday night at 9 p.m. And be safe out there with Cinco de Mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you.